Well, welcome once again to the Expansion Zone TV. Good to be here again and to uh, chat with another amazing and interesting guest and topic. But I'm going to throw out a quote before we get started. And that quote is, I may not have gone where I intended to go, but I think I have ended up where I needed to be. And I have a feeling that our guest today, it, it probably can relate very much to that, uh, that quote. I know I can. And of course, that's a quote by Douglas Adams, the long dark tea time of the soul. And so today's topic is confessions of a BET producer. Um, former BET and MTV producer exposes the entertainment industry secrets. So that's going to be very interesting. And of course, my guest is David Bradley, former BET and MTV producer. So before we bring him in, uh, I just want to go over that quote a little bit. I may not have gone where I intended to go, but I think I have ended up where I needed to be. Well, I think the fact is that wherever we find ourselves at this moment, and I think in, in any moment in our lives, uh, we must remember that there is something to be learned. That's what I have come to learn. There's always something to be learned. There's something to be understood, uh, to be shaped or reshaped. So each moment is always filled with opportunities, opportunities to discover deeper aspects of who we are. Our choices guide the way to every next moment in our lives. And so uh, I think an, an honest introspective in this moment will always show the truth of our stories and why perhaps we continue to repeat some of these stories. So once we own those truths, then our options will change whereby choices perhaps will be different. So think about that. I know of which I speak because I sure have explored the idea of telling myself the truth. Sometimes I don't wanna hear it, but you know, it, it definitely has made a difference in my life in those moments when I tune in and actually see the truth of, of what's there. So. Now let's do the bio of my guest. David Bradley was a producer and show creator for Viacom owned BET. David worked as Dave Chappelle uh, rehearsal stand-in and set production assistant and set design team on NBC, uh, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, Stunt Unit uh, PA for Spider-Man, for Spider-Man 2, just to name a few projects. In 2007, he began to lecture about sexual harassment in entertainment uh, industry and authored a book entitled BET, D. Brad and Me. And I think that was in 2007, chronicling the, his experience of dealing with sexual harassment from the VP of the network, as well as uh, the sexual harassment of women he witnessed firsthand. The book also explained how symbolism and myth mythos in mainstream music and TV and film and its intended effect on the masses. All right, so without further ado, welcome, 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 David Bradley to the Expansion Zone. Thank you, thank you, it's a pleasure, definitely a pleasure. Good to have you here now. Um, those are bold moves, you know, deciding to come out and um, and really expose what you've seen. And I think the beauty is that you're talking from firsthand experience, not thirdhand or fourthhand experience, but from what you've witnessed. And I think particularly now, the information you're sharing is really, really vital. So I want to thank you for doing that. Now, uh, do we, well, let's see, do you want to probably give a little bit of, of, of background just as to how you ended up in that industry? I know it was after college, so do you want to kind yeah. of set the stage for that a little bit? Yes. Um, I was lazy in college, 
my mother and um I didn't know what I want my major to be. So I think I was like a junior. I was in student unions. I was in the Pan African Student Union. I was in the college center board only because I got a job working in the vice president's office of academic affairs and got cool with the president. So that's another thing I tell people. I know for a fact you could throw an election because I and you can win one because the president helped me win an election because he had an agenda that I could help him cover. And I know what it's like. So I'm like, college politics are not much different than out in the real world. Politics um, is politics. <laughs> right, exactly. And I know for a fact that that man walked me in there and said, this is what we're going to do. And this is what I need you to do for me. And da, 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 da. Next thing you know, I'm president. But um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And my mother always said, all I ever wanted to do was have fun. And I realized she was correct. So I, I was into the house music scene. And I knew a couple of guys in, in, uh, that were in videos. And I asked a couple of questions. And then I auditioned for He Got Game, the Spike Lee film. I actually won the lead role, but they gave it to Hill Harper because I'm 6'3", the main character was 6'4". They needed the main character to be short, but then that led to me getting, um, doing, ba uh, doing a standard role on New York Undercover with uh, Tommy Ford from Martin was doing it, and I'm watching the people run around the set, so I it got It was a out. great show. It was a great show, and the only reason why I got out to ask questions because me and the main star, co-star Malik Yoba didn't get along because we got in an argument over basketball, and he got really sensitive on me. So I was like, whatever. And I get out of the car, we talk, and I ask questions. And then one thing leads to another. And then I decided I wanted to get into film and television. And then I used to go to New York and I interned for this independent film director that stole a lot of money from his sponsor. <laughs> and he left me holding the bag. <laughs> I will never forget that as long as I live. I'm sure you won't. <laughs> but it was funny. They weren't um, upset with me. They knew what he did. And they said, wow, he's going to put the intern in front of us. I was like, hey, I don't even know what y'all talking about. And then I talked my way into MTV as an intern. And there is when I began to notice, because I would, didn't always want to be in TV and film. So it's not like this was my dream. I just did it. And there I began to notice that they would watch black entertainment television. And they would watch the video shows. And I, used to, and I didn't even watch the video shows. And then I would ask why they would explain to me that this is how they could tell which black artists they would want to make mainstream. So if they see them playing a lot on BET. So I'm taking all this information in. And I'm inquisitive. I learned a lot. And that's pretty much what happened. I talked my way in and MTV, and then I talked my way into BET for a job. <laughs> I just called the producer, cold call, would not let her off the phone until finally she said, you know, just send me your stuff. And then they saw MTV, and you know how sometimes it can be like, oh, you were there? And I think I was like the first homegrown producer from BET that was actually at an MTV intern, VH1. Um, so I've been literally the fly on the wall. Like I was, I met Justin Timberlake when I was a production assistant who told me what his career was going to be. I've been at the forefront. So it's really weird that I see so many different people that I was standing right by their side when these things were happening. I was always a flop, just literally like the spook that sat by the door. Wow. Right. Right. So you've seen the, the transformation taking place, the, the, the process. No, no, I didn't see it. I partook in it. You were part of oh, I was that a major process. part of it. I was a wow. major part of it. Um, but no one pays, people don't pay me a lot of attention because I, I surmise it's because of what I look like. I promise you, I think if I was like 5'10", lighter, or I was a white male and I was saying this, I'd be like this huge guy. But, and then even dealing with sexual harassment, I think a lot of people don't take me seriously because I have PTGS, um, post-traumatic growth syndrome, where I took a negative and took it in my life and said, okay, I'm gonna learn from it. Mm. And I think that I'm supposed to cry, especially looking how I look, either I'm gonna be hyper-masculine or I'm gonna break down and cry. And because I handle it like, no, I have a beautiful daughter that would have never come if I never went through that. You, right. you dig where I'm coming from? So right, I learned, right. I met so many. I was introduced to you during that time. The people that I, I've sat at the feet of elders, I sat at the feet of Dr. Ben. You understand what I'm saying? I've sat right. at the feet of you know, so many people. I've, I've dined with Al Gore. Don't ask me how I ended up in a restaurant with this man. <laughs> with them paying for my meal, by the way. <laughs> okay. I think it, it, I, I, you know what? I'm starting to realize that none of that is surprising, according to the personality of this this young person at that time. Um, just just hungry, I think, for experiencing and life is what it sounds like to me. And uh, you just weren't afraid. But that's the kicker. No, 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 no. That's the funny thing I tell people. <laughs> Entertainment, politics, sports, 
everyone knows your lineage. I did not know at the time that my cousin co-created Married with Children. I didn't know at the time that he was, Michael G. Moy was the writer for like all the 70s sitcoms. Hollywood knew. You understand where I'm coming from? Right. There were times that I walked into places and some, my nickname was D. Brad, which was short for David Bradley. Mm -hmm. There were executives that knew my name was David Bradley that I had never met before. Mm -hmm. I met, I hung out with um, an Oscar winning actor who's actually jammed up right now for the exact same reason why I stopped hanging with him. This man knew my name was David. He knew, he never called me D. Brad. I introduced myself as D. Brad. My tattoos say D. Brad, it does not, but he knew my name was David. But I stopped hanging with him for the exact reason why he's going to court right now. So <laughs> I even spoke about Harvey Weinstein. I spoke about Bill Cosby and this dude right now. Because the reason why I stopped hanging with this Oscar winning actor is because we were in a club, club bed in Miami, and the dude was darn it like literally physically, sexually groping these women, and we the only two brothers in that joint. I'm like, yo, dog, what you doing? And right. his response to me was, oh, Dave, I'm just having fun. Mm. And I looked at him and I walked away. And, and you know, this was, a, this was a, gonna be a bad idea. But why do you think when you say um, they seem to know your name, so are you saying that the connection between you and your cousin, even though you didn't know it's known, because is the, the industry based on um, a lot of connections with relatives or, or yes they know they know it's, it's kind of like how i view it is like a network well it right. is a if, network but think about it. if you took over when you know who was who in these important positions you would know who's related to everybody you would know you would know and there'll just be some that you go and on top of it i come from a family lineage my i come from the olmec tribe so my family technically by western civilization history were Native Americans. I have a family seal in New in Connecticut. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I come from, it's just that whatever happened in my family history, it was forgotten. But the people mm. in power didn't forget because there's right. no reason in the world. Like when I was a child, my best friend was a white kid that just popped up out of the blue. And mm -hmm. his father used to literally show up out of the blue and would know wherever we were. And I remember saying to my parents, it's almost as if someone put him in my life to keep me out of trouble, you know, the typical black kid thing. Right. Because that's what it did. And then the moment we graduated high school, our friendship ended. And to this day, he won't come see me because I worked mm. with his wife who was a school teacher. Mm -hmm. And his father is, a, so my family was being watched. So my story is a little bit different. They mm. were, we were watched, my family was watched. But don't understand it. When you look at celebrities, every celebrity is related to someone that has already been there, even in like wrestling. John Cena's father is somebody major in wrestling. But you feel what I'm saying? Like I've told right. for years, Usher's father is Ben Vereen. And I promise you, if you look at the photos of them together, you go, holy cow, that's his dad. So everyone's related to somebody. And I have to be related to, I mean, think about it, who I said Michael G. Moy was. Mm -hmm. Just married with children alone, you understand who I would be as his blood relative following behind me. And, and, the, and, and okay, so I guess you, you sort of explained the purpose of that. now. I want to look at you. Um, you mentioned about the perception that is being created. The the people believe what they see on television, and it sounds like that is, of course, a major part of um, the structuring and the shaping and the reason why they sit and study um, in order to create a certain perception um, for people. Do you want to talk about that? Well, actually, you made a post yesterday that got that had me giddy, I think, because I saw this is going to be a fun talk, because the funny thing is what we're dealing with now is the supposed advanced science that these other beings knew before. us, And people don't get it that the most highly advanced science is your soul and spirit. They don't get it. They don't get that their mind, that's the advanced science. So I speak from this perspective because as a young production assistant, I played with symbolism, but I didn't realize what I was doing. I would, when I would produce the rap, the shows on the, at the station, I would send my friends shout outs every day in the show. Each friend, like I had one friend who liked Corvettes, that day, the scene, the backdrop would be a bunch of red Corvettes. Mm -hmm. And I would spell out my township in each segment in the show. Each segment would have two letters. And so by the time you got to the end of the show, my township, there were artists that I would do subliminal programming, but I didn't realize I was what doing you were doing. 
funny. I thought it was like, yo, this really works. So then what happened is after a while, it hit me. I was like, wait a minute. And then I worked in news and I knew that every news editor has an agenda that they push that we all have to follow. I know that if like, if you go get the daily news, New York daily news and you open it up, it makes a complete sentence, the front page to the back page based on what the news editor's agenda is. So I began to think to myself, well, what happens if people are doing this and they don't have your best interests in mind? There's a problem. There's, and that's when it hit me like, holy cow. Because if I'm able for my little production assistant level, if I'm able to take millions of people that watch BET and make them believe that an artist like Eve is this major deal, holy crap. Well, yeah, what about yeah. the people that know what they're doing? So, and I would There's do no this. limit to what they can do. And I would do this with artists, so I know it works. No one can tell me it don't work. And then I studied and I began to, then I realized that Sigmund Freud had a nephew. And I may say his name wrong, Albert Bernays. Well, no, no, yeah, Sigmund Freud was um, Al, um, Edward Bernays, Edward um, Bernays. Um, nephew. So he, oh, he was, was the nephew. nephew. Okay, yeah. I got it backwards. Thank you yeah. for correcting that. But so I read his story and I watched the interview with Edward, with Edward Bernays before he died. Right. And he started talking about, he laughed. Well, he's, he's the master of marketing. He's a father of, um, of public relations. Right. So when, I heard, when he told his story about being commissioned by Hollywood, being commissioned by the government to do the things he was doing to see if the American public would, and he was laughing and said he didn't think it would work, but it did. And I was like, and, and isn't that relevant right now? Because we're watching this play out. We're watching people um, really drink the Kool-Aid uh, of, of the um, perception yes. that's being yes. created. In my book, I, predict, I, prophes I literally prophesied all of it. In 2007, when that book came out, even down to, I told black people, you're going to feel like you're back in the civil rights movement. And it's not a Donald Trump thing, either, by the way. Right. I'm, so I, and so I explained all of that, but I've often said, I still believe because of what I look like, no one took it. It was like the powers that be were like, don't say anything. No one said a word, but no one's ever come out and said I was wrong. But it was like, don't say anything. And, I, and I've always said, I was like, you know, if I look different, I think it would have been received differently. People would have taken it and said, wow, because I talked about all of this that's happening. And I told people in the future, if you don't know the truth, when you feel it, you're going to be lost. You're going to mm -hmm. believe anything they put up in, on that television. And I know because I've done it before. And look um, at how big tech, look at the advancements in technology since that time. Since, I mean, yeah. you know, it's, it's rapidly moving. Yeah. So it's even the networking ability is even greater now to, to make these things happen. And we're yeah. watching it every day. And all you can do is just shake your head. It's, it's, well, well, that's because I think the average person believes that they're not a useless leader to their leaders. The average person believes that their leaders care about them when they don't. They don't understand that it only takes 10 years to, to, to start it to, for a generation to kind of form their culture. Right. So for me the past 10 years, the irony is for me the past 10 years, I wasn't in film and television, but I was in education. <laughs> so, <laughs> all, so my daughter who's 12 came to me yesterday and said, hey dad, Remember a couple of years when I first started school, you told me that I did not have to um, honor Christopher Columbus or stand up for Columbus. You were right. So it's funny because I have a bunch of children from the age of 15 to 25, mm -hmm. black, yellow, green, Latino, white, that I was like this with that are sitting around saying, wow, Mr. Bradley said all of this five years ago. And he was this exact same way. Like I'm very, pan I, my best friend was a white kid. But he, but which also shows me with African Americans, you don't got to give up yourself to have a white friend because he he rode skateboards and wore Vans. I wore Adidas and listened to Run DMC. He listened to Aerosmith. But there was a respect. Right. I was very pro black. One of the mm -hmm. funniest friends we had, we brought to see do the right thing together. And when Radio Raheem got killed, we leaving and I'm angry and I'm staring at him. He goes, Hey, what are you staring at me for? I didn't kill Radio Raheem. I was in the, <laughs> in the, station, in the place with you. And then we laughed about it. Mm -hmm. so, I was exposed to this, that kind of a lifestyle. And then you add it years later with everything that I'm saying. And I'm like, the people aren't understanding you're being played. This is like, even, I know I'm all over the place, right? But it's all gonna come full circle. No, yeah, yeah, no, I, I see what you're, I see yeah. what you're saying though. That's why I brought in 
what's going on today because Even it relates now. very much to what you're talking about. You know, today is what's happening now. Remember um, War of the Worlds? Mm -hmm. I was explaining this to my daughter. There was a time where there was no TV. Everybody went by radio. And Orson Welles being a great author he is, he had this great story where they actually had the American public believing we were being invaded by aliens. Right. <laughs> so I tell Should people, you say more? Need you say more? You know, so I, I am at a point where I'm not going to Candace Owens people and just tell everybody what they don't want to hear. Right. But I told my own 12-year-old daughter, don't you give your emotion to that George Floyd situation. Mm -hmm. You better start asking questions. And me being... I'm 6'3". I look like every composite sketch of, a, of, a, of somebody who stole something. I've never <laughs> in my life been in a situation where I thought a police officer was going to kill me. So I look at the situation and I'm like, the powers that be are playing triple level chess. And these cats, are, these, the average person is not even playing checkers. They're playing tic-tac-toe. And I'm just yeah. looking at them, you know, this... The mentality. They that can't we, win. You can't win if you're playing tic tac toe and they're playing chess. But you know yes, I mean? and I agree 100%. And I think, like, we're told about extraterrestrials, we're told about aliens, et cetera, et cetera, that they come from the ladies here and there. No, that's not true. They're already here. This, this planet has already been taken over. And it's a very insect hive ant mentality because I study ants. And ants have this group mentality to where they all will go one way. And there will be yeah. a lot of them that have to die before finally one ant goes, wait a minute, we're all drowning in this water. Let's go over here. And then all the ants go, okay. And when I looked at America, it's like, wow, look at the culture. If you study insects, we live like insects. Mm -hmm. There's hive, we have a hive, we have this group mentality. We all serve, we all work to serve one situation. The hive mind. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it's, so this is where we are. And, and then, people get very upset. Some people get very upset when you say these things. Um, and I, you know, I think, I think that we as human beings don't want to think for a moment that we are that. And I think that's part of what's upsetting, um, along with the responsibility that comes with taking that kind of ownership of self. Say that again. The that is what I believe is the biggest issue. People do not want to respond to their own abilities. It is easier for me to hate Donald Trump blindly than to sit down and go, okay, here are these other candidates. Uh, uh, uh. It's just easy to go, I hate Donald Trump. I'm going to be this right there. Or So that's where we get this cancel culture from. Because it's way easier for me to just cancel Sonya Barrett without having a discussion. Because there's a high probability if we sit down and talk, you're going to prove me wrong. <laughs> you're going to make me go, oh gosh, maybe... And that's why, that's where we are. So I totally agree with everything you just said. We, this, the bottom line is I do blame people like us though. Mm -hmm. Why should all the demons and warlocks have all the fun? But meanwhile, the mystics and witches and sorcerers and high science people, we sit back and we go, well, we'll just sit. Why do I have to be a watcher? Why mm -hmm. do I have to be an observer? Like what rule is that? because they're having all the fun and they know who we are, so they're not gonna touch us. And it's because it is similar to how I explain when it comes to the police brutality situation. I've taught to people, I'm in, I was heavily in the conscious, African conscious community. And I don't ever, re, ever, ever recall being at an Adunde festival, being at some lecture with brothers and they're, and they're like, lady for the police and they're like, da, 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 going off. I don't ever recall the police running up on any of us. Like, you do not hear of anyone from the conscious community getting beat up and killed by the police. And what, and what, what do you think that, why do you think that is? Because they, because they do, they have knowledge of self or they're aspiring for that. So when the officer deals with someone who knows who they are, he sees another human. But if you have no clue who you are, you're in a low vibration. Everything is vibratory, right? So they don't see that vibration because I've been in situations where it was three in the morning and I did my social duty as a brother and stood by to make sure these brothers were all right. And these, these officers ran up on me. But guess what happened? Everyone apologized to an officer who was out of line and actually mm. said to me, would you like to come down to the station and file a report? This is NYPD, 135th Street. Mm. It happened to me, I got, I happened to 147th Street. That's how all the hustlers, I got cool with them because the cops was busting them up and I told the officer, don't you touch me, man. And that cop looked at me. And he did not touch me and said, you know, sir, do you mind? 
So I tell people it's a vibration thing. The average person yelling and screaming right now that's angry has never had a really negative run-in with the police. Has ne does not know what it's like for an officer to grab him up. The only people that really should have been that emotional was cats in the inner cities and brothers on the block. But if you were the average person, what are you yelling and screaming for? Why are you out here raging? Because you don't know anybody that's been killed by a police officer? <laughs> You, do, you understand where I'm coming from? Right. So the vibration and frequency that that's being operated on, we're fifth dimensional now. And I tell everybody, mama nature gonna do what she gonna do. You can either take the window or the stairs. What you gonna do? So you're either gonna cooperate or you're gonna have all this happen, but it ain't got nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with anyone else that's on a high frequency. The same thing with COVID-19. That I considered like, I oh, got that book, uh, Thanos, the Marvel, the Infinity Gems. That's what that was. You can't kill everybody at the same time because you throw off the balance of the whole universe. But I darn sure can give you a movie where I'm telling you what's going to happen. Well, we're always told. That's the interesting thing, though. We're, you know, we're always told um, because that's the game. The, the game is you, you have to disclose information. But it's just that people are so programmed and so distracted that um, they're not hearing that. There's, there's selective pieces of, uh, of language that they hear and, the, and, and it's already known that they will only hear that part. So, yeah. right, so the, the keys that are being given are the information, key points, the decoding information is not heard um, by the right. majority. But here's the kicker, that's the science behind, I presume the 5% and the 144,000. But here's the funny part that I say to people like myself, you know, who want to get up and say what we know. The irony is maybe because we all know that this, this 3D realm is either is, is a half spiritual school, half prison. Let's just be real about it. This is a prison. Right. But this is a war prison. planet. <laughs> right. So here's the kicker. For all of us who know, maybe they don't know because it's not their job to know because you're the one that's in last place. I, swear, I say that to conscious people. Don't be so arrogant because you might transition and look up and the same person you thought was dumb, deaf, and blind look at you like, you finally, back, you finally made it? You good? <laughs> like, we might be the super seniors here. <laughs> so, like, you know, so a lot of people acknowledge, I'm like, slow down because you really might, because understand, and, and other you flip, it's the upside down world. So on an esoteric level, am I really that knowledgeable or am I like, the one who needed to learn because I know part of my esoteric story and I know that I'm here because I did some stuff I shouldn't have done. This is jail for me. I'm just running the yard. I've just been here. <laughs> my time is almost up. So it's time for me to like, all right, let me do what I need to do so that the PO people be like, yo, I can get out. You know, you did your work. Like literally I'm here in jail and there's a lot of us, but everyone's here for different reasons, which is why people get to do what they do. And right, like, yeah, everybody's here on their own agenda. I mean, yeah, there's, yeah, there's different yeah. reasons. So, you know. so what you said, paying it forward was like, that's what you do. And I explained to people, every Friday, I can come steal your money. Take, no, take money out of your paycheck. But if I'm singing like, I'm gonna take your cash, and you love the way I do this, well, when I take your money from you, ain't nothing gonna happen to me. There's no karma. I told you what I was gonna do. You just like the fact that I was dancing, and I did this when I said I'm gonna take your cash. Right. And that's what people don't get about what's happening right now that we're calling the elite is that like no and that's what people don't get about this whole thing with donald trump it's the rules of the game or, or what i like to call it um reading the terms and conditions which is what people don't read is the terms and conditions of the yes. game yes yes but then you accept it though you don't really re like we do with our phones and everything else you just want to get past it download the software do you accept the terms and conditions we just want to use the software so we just click accept but yeah. if you stop to read it so you know so it's it's all the same thing you know yeah yeah we are just um this right here first of all as i explained to my daughter it's order out of chaos it, it has to be it has to be but what well, says on the money <laughs> right well it has to be i mean just if you look at how everything is created Every yes, creation right. story you've ever read, every creation story you've ever may have seen, maybe you can go to the Akashic Records, I don't know. But it was all out of chaos. So what's happening now has to happen. Um, my biggest thing was that I tried to explain, in particular to Black people, so I don't want to cut anyone else out of it, but my effort at the time was taught, because there were young white people saying what I was saying. There mm -hmm. was the William Cooper, he was older, the William Coopers of the world. But right. in Black 
America, we call it all conspiracy theory. But I used to tell black people, well, the, the Tuskegee experiment was a conspiracy theory, but they actually did it. Right. <laughs> so right. everything, so I tried to break it down in a way, like even with the deal with black women feeling like they're being attacked, I said it. I said, listen, this is what's coming down the pike. Women are going to be attacked. Not just black women, women in general. The whole key would be to make you not want to respect the like that male across from you. And right. then as well as explaining my experiences of dealing with sexual harassment. And it wasn't really about me because I'm a man. I, I believe in gender roles. I'm sticking with it. It is what it is. And as a man, I could handle it. But what threw me for a loop was watching the women go through it was like, yo, like this is crazy. It was the entertainment industry in politics, <laughs> when it comes to that harassment, is insane. Yeah, but insane. isn't it more, uh, I mean, there's a point where it's really about this sort of uh, this ritualistic um, aspect of it, symbology. There's the harassment, and then there is something else, you know, yes. in the bigger picture. Yes, but the thing is, what you're talking about, the, uh, the symbolism, symbolism of and everything else, that is the very top. That's the apex of it. That's, right. That's everyone the, else yeah. is just a bunch of losers. Right. Like if you, like I tell people, if you look at everyone that you see that's being, every guy that's being out being rapey, right? If you were to go back to college and high school, everyone would say, so-and-so was corny as hell. Harvey Weinstein, they'd be like, what? Harvey was corny. He didn't have, they all about, because majority of the people in there are losers. They are people that did not achieve, have something to prove, or I did not get a bunch. I've heard different or inter- male say this. Man, I ain't, you know, I'm making it for the time. I didn't get girls when I was in high school. Right. Yeah, that's why you're so rapey, dog. I get it. You understand? Right. But so, now money sort of buys that opportunity, at least in their minds anyway. Yes. And then here's the other problem. And there's going to be people that are not going to like to hear this. I've been in enough situations on my own where I put women with sexual harassment in the same kind of line that I put African-Americans in racism. There are a lot of women that play in that game, that play that. So there's 20 women, and I will say literally 15 are going to be down with whatever because in their mind, I'm going to get ahead. The problem is for those five women that go no. You understand? The dude is not going to really see your no because I just have been with 10 women. Trust me when I tell you more than on one, I can count on more than one hand at times that I've had to tell a young lady, like, yo, you're my intern. You don't got to do that. You, your work was great. Even in my young day, I slept with a young lady, hooked up with uh, Luke from the Two Live crew, hooked me up, and the little, the, the, she was, I was young too, we were both young. She said to me, I've always wanted to be, and this is what made me not sleep with her. She said, I've always wanted to sleep with someone in television. And I was like, I'm a PA, I'm not on the television. And that literally was why I stopped, why I didn't mess with her. Because I couldn't understand and fathom, like, wait a minute, you're willing to give yourself up for the possibility of, so what a lot of women in regular society don't get when they get when they hear these stories is that a lot of these women placated. I've seen women let a man come and rub them down and been looking at her like, yo, why you let him do that if that was uncomfortable? And then he walks away and she's like, oh, he's so creepy. And I'm like, what you let him do it for? So I tell my 12-year-old daughter, even with me, you have the right immediately to say, that's uncomfortable. Right. Without Absolutely. worrying about repercussions. So unfortunately, right. and I say the African-American community because they have a tendency to do the same. They'll kind of cry racism but yet in between all of that you played in that game you right didn't carry and, and there's that it, truthful I, I mean there's that part where, that i was talking about earlier it's that moment of know thyself that moment of um truth to self ownership of aspects of this and i think as human beings most human beings black white pink or green yes, yes. tend to have a difficult time with owning some things because it's too big it's too much you don't want to take ownership of that so it's easier to yeah. sometimes yeah. see that it's an external thing happening you know yeah. to you we don't we don't this society won't acknowledge a lot like i i the same thing in my book i'm gonna do it again even though i was 15 years ahead of everybody else no problem i'm gonna do this again i think that i said in about another year and a half this whole the psyche of the country is going to be on, on, its, on its rear end because whether they like it or not, it's coming. So they better batten down the hatches because in a, in a moment, 
all these people that are idol that I love their idols are gonna wonder how their favorite idols live so long with so much and gave everyone else so little. They're gonna realize your favorite idol was in little children. You're gonna realize your favorite idol was a thief, was a this, that. It is all coming out. Well, it's, it, you're right. And it's been and, for some years, gradually, gradually, gradually. I am speaking with my guest, uh, David Bradley, and we are having a vast discussion um, about a great number of things, but actually it's about uh, confessions of a BET producer. He's a former BET and MTV producer, and he's exposing uh, secrets, things about the entertainment industry. And, and really, in all honesty, in, in terms of also how that all spills over into the world that we see today. All right, so let's pick up from there. And, and, and Hollywood is a great reflector um, of reality because people yeah. like to model, as you say, like to model um, the stars, as we call them, stars. They model life, their lives after um, a star. And I'm gonna throw this at you and then you can respond to that. But based on everything you're saying, when we look at this time too with the lockdown and all of that, what we see are celebrities coming on saying, um, we're all in this together, you know, stay at home. Uh, and I think to myself, in a way, this is so insulting that you think that because you bring these celebrities on and they tell me to stay inside, we're all in this together, that I'm gonna go, oh, okay, okay, now I'm on board for this. Now that Tom Hanks has said, do this, I'm going, okay, I'm gonna do it. And <laughs> I mean, so, so you have to look at the fact that that is what they're suggesting though. Because they know, based on everything you've said, they know how the pub the public responds to these idols. Yeah, well, one, I want to add it really quickly. I did all of this in 2007. So I just want to make sure <laughs> people understand I'm not new. Uh, and the second one, yeah, you're 100% correct with what everything you just said, except the people do listen. And like the fact that someone like, they, that they're so arrogant that they'll put, have the audacity to put Tom Hanks, pizza loving, hot dog loving Tom Hanks, you're gonna tell me what? <laughs> you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, and people are gonna like, say, oh no, he is just making this up. We well, don't okay. know these people though. This is what's crazy right. to me. Right. You don't know them, you don't have dinner with them, you don't go to their house. They've created an image is what you're saying, a perception. And here's the beauty of it all. I've sat with, a lot, with, with the, some of these people. And let me tell the average person, your favorite celebrity don't give two craps about you. I've, there are very few entertainers that I've sat with, chilling, smoking a blunt, whatever we doing, where they were like, man, you know, the conditions of America, man, please. They worry about their next paycheck. They next show they're going to get on. They just want y'all to go watch their stuff and this, that, and the third, and they know they have influence. So Tom Hanks has the influence so he can give a whole PSA standing in front of a prison door because they know we're not going to look up and see the barcode at the top of the door. They, not, they know that we're not going to say, well, why is Tom looking like this? so drawn and all oh, because he's been in prison. He's been locked up, but they don't know this. They know that they can put Oprah Winfrey on the, on the screen and she'll tell us something. And the average person not gonna look at her ankle and go, what's that big square bulge on her ankle? And ask questions because they know we're looking at Oprah. We're not realizing that, well, Oprah is probably on house arrest or something. You understand? So they, they know that the average person doesn't see, but what's gonna happen now is they're going to see, and I, and the one thing I can't wait for is when it comes time to meet the extraterrestrials. They've been <laughs> you had to go there. <laughs> they've been telling us about out there, and I'm not a flat earther. I don't argue. I think that is a silly argument and debate. So what if the earth is flat as brown? I is it, I say it was square, triangle. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, the light and gas man don't care if we live on a flat or a round planet. All I know is I got bills to do. My daughter, she don't care. She want that little pair of sneakers she saw. <laughs> so it doesn't make a difference, to be honest with you. But um, they've been, we've been told things that they're out there. Well, it's like, no, they're in there. They're in there. Yeah. There's more space inside this planet than on the surface. They're in there. It's just that agreements were made. <laughs> you know, that those agreements were made. Center of the civil... planet. People right. don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, we don't, I think like, for instance, I had a conversation on Facebook today 
with a first, with a group of people that were going on about the face mask. And, you know, and I was like, basically, it's a placebo effect, but okay, whatever, because it makes you feel better. But we're not being, t- I was like, if the CDC and the World Health Organization really cared about you, they would all just start talking to you about your diet and your life. <laughs> That's what I've been saying. <laughs> it doesn't come up at all, ever. <laughs> Never. Like, like, nothing comes up about it. Uh, nothing. Don't, no, go, no go in the sauna. Nothing. Yeah. They would tell you, they would say, hey, listen, you know, a lot of this, some of y'all, is because on the inside, you messed up. And it's just manifesting physically because this is where we are cosmically. So some of y'all could just meditate your COVID-19 away. And some of y'all could just admit you and talk to yourselves and deal with your own truth. And you wake up tomorrow and be like, wow, I feel 100% better. But they won't do it. They'll, they'll keep everybody arguing over the face mask. Well, it's, it's it definitely cre- it's created um, more of a, uh, what, what you call division, which I mean, Obviously, it, it's all it's always been about divide and, and yeah, conquer, yeah, yeah, and yeah. um and and I know you know I've I've had to really taper myself. I have to say yes for radio, because yeah, yeah, yeah. people have been well you know people have been rubbed the wrong way with um the fact that yes there's things that can be very brutal that I may say or my guests may say, so this is the reason why I started doing this part of it. So the TV part of it, so that we can say, you know, whatever that we we do need to say. And some of what we may talk about, maybe we'll talk about it also, you know, at the end of this. So anybody who's who's listening to the radio version, if you want to hear more of it, then you can tune in. You can go to the website and watch the rest of it. But but anyway, yeah, we're so package. Everything everything that we believe is a lie, like. I would even go on record as saying that we're always taught, taught geographically and historically to look at another land, when in reality, like, I think we're actually living in Africa. Sorry. Living, many, living in the, Africa? The land, the land, the land and, not, and I'm not being from a racial perspective. I'm speaking from my non- uh, <laughs> You're talking my, as far as geography? Yeah, yeah, I'm talking what? from my non professional geographical positions. Like, nah, yeah. because when you look at this country, the land masses and the things they hide in the Grand Canyon, they won't let you go because they know- But it used to be though. You know right. that, right? Before no, the division of the, um, before the separation into these yeah, continents, yeah. this was well, Africa. Time frames as, as far as like a lot of the, the writings, from mm-hmm. all the different civilizations. This was the land that they talked about. Mm-hmm. This was the exact land that they, they spoke of, which is why I think most people that believe that they're immigrants are really not. Like this right, was, right. They're natives of the land. They're right. Yeah, they're from the land. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a lot of these things, majority of what we know is not really true. And as I stated before, I can't wait till we get the extraterrestrials come, the aliens come. <laughs> I can't wait because as I tell my daughter, do you think, or I tell any, or I would tell my students, you really believe everyone that you meet is a human being? Like, I know for a fact that I have met people that have not been who I thought they were. I know for a fact that either I'm crazy or she was crazy. I was cool. I ended up, I met a young lady that was friends that was one of Prince's, and I don't know what you would call her, but he had women around him. Right. And She's built, she's very attractive, but she's built like a, a, a gecko. The way she stands and her arms are short. So one, and she had children my daughter's age, they would play. So one day we was all hanging out and I jokingly said to her, so when you shed, how long does it take? And she gave me this look and then asked me to ask the children to go out. I'm like, all right. And then she gave me this long story. And as I'm looking at her, I'm like, yo, you're exactly what I see. I've met teachers. You mean she told you? She, she told me and showed me on her arm when she sheds, when she her skin peels. I met a teacher that was a stone cold witch in my hometown, and I called her on it, and she called me into the room. It was like, well, how would you know? I said, because I grew up in the occult. That's my life. <laughs> you understand? Mm-hmm. I'm very in tune with my fourth and fifth dimensional self. I'm very aware of who I am. That's why I couldn't be touched by the elite because they know, dog. I'll go in your fourth dimension and wreck shop. I die two minutes from now. This whole joint falls in five, less than five minutes. They yeah. know who I am. <laughs> they know yeah. you. So, I, so to me, this is like the movie. They live. Yeah, 
So they know who Sonya Barrett is. They know who you are. Fit, yeah. fit, they know, like, I can't touch her. No, I know that. So but, yeah. that's what I mm -hmm. meant earlier when I said, why should all the witches, why should the demons and warlocks have all the fun? There's a reason why Hollywood and the MCU is releasing the immortals. Mm -hmm. There's a reason they're releasing it. Because they know that people are here. So right. they try, they know the people are here. They Remember know. when V came out? I mean, yep. I'm not getting into that, but I'm just saying. But it's fun to talk about. <laughs> the, well, the stream of it. No, you know, that. no, it's fun to talk about. But um, I was trying to maybe talk about that afterwards. But, yeah. but I remember when, when V came out, V was for the, the visitors. And uh, I, you know what I'm talking about. That's what it was. It was a, a series called V, and it was the yep. visitors. It was the very first that I think they did a second. They came back years later. But we've been given a lot of this stuff for years. I mean, going back to what, I don't know, I'm going to say more specifically the, the 60s, the 50s, the 60s, we started to see a progression. You I mean more and more and more. So we've been been uh, prepared. They've been preparing yeah. human beings. Remember when Steven Spielberg did, um, oh gosh, what was the, uh, Taken. His oh. Taken, where you remember you remember how that movie was where where they people thought mm -hmm, whatever mm -hmm. was happening and then it turns out that it was just a projection it was a, a hologram but you couldn't really tell that kind of technology i mean so you know we you know where they did it they actually showed people the truth in the, the first original um extraterrestrial movie close encounters of the third kind right close tell encounters. People, skip through that whole movie and you want to know the truth, get to the last five minutes. What happened in the last five minutes? Who came out of that UFO? All human beings and military. There wasn't no aliens that walked. It was all people that walked out of right, there. Right, so I'm like, right. they're telling you all what's going on. But I got into that aspect because it was fun. Like regular science was boring to me because even like when I teach, when I have to work as a supplemental teacher in science in schools, that science is archaic and outdated. A molecule in an atom changes all the time. So how can you give me something from 1972 and say it sticks to today? Right. So a lot of what, what we're happening, what we have happening is for me more fun. But the crazy part is I can go to the youth and I can have a better conversation with them about this information than a grown person. Mm -hmm. Because in their minds, they don't think it's that crazy. I can see and talk about extraterrestrials with my kids and you'll see all sorts of kids. The kid look like he hang, like he sell weed to the kid that's a gothic to the kid. And we'll all sit and have this lengthy discussion about extraterrestrials. They'll say things that they've seen and events that oh, they, yeah. you know, so I find it fun. Um, and I feel confident where I can be a watcher at this point with all this happening because A, I've done my duty. That book is out there. Right, right. And then B, the past 10 years, I've spent time in education. I right. spent time. So I've been able to talk to these children and, and get the sense of where they're coming from. And as I tell them, I admire them so much because they go so hard and they're going to be the ones to clean this up. They just, um, as not going back to regular things, right? As these, uh, the uprising show you, the only problem is that this young generation doesn't know the difference between an ally and an enemy. Mm -hmm. And I used to tell my students, you all think I'm your enemy because I won't let you cut class. No, dog. <laughs> you know, so you'll get I'm mad. I'm your ally, that's why. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As if, like, I'm wrong for saying you can't cut class. I'm your ally because when you really get jammed up, who's the one that went to, your, went to the football coach and said, hey, so-and-so, so that was me. You understand? So right. it's like that's where I see this uprising is being usurped and is being taken over well, because they don't have the proper guidance um, they're being led by means and ideology <laughs> as much as anything else. Well, what about if you notice, and I've talked about that a number of times, if you notice over the last several years, there was a string of films that came out and it was always featuring children. The children are the one, the children are the one that are going to, you know, do the uprising and the revolt and the pulling us out. There's been a lot of those films, and I thought, wow, has anybody not noticed there's, you know, um, yeah, the purge and all of that? 
Pardon me? Right? Was it The Purge, one of those films? Yeah, I know what you're talking well, about. Well, no, the, not The Purge, but um, there was a, a series. I can't remember all the films right now. I wish I had Like Hunger them. Games. And Hunger things. Games yeah, and yeah, yeah. this other one. Um, was it, um, it wasn't the, wasn't bl the Blade. Anyway, it was always about a group of children that they either uh, had moved to some place and they were, they, they isolated them or something like that. And then they had to try to break out or escape. Yeah, basically the Lord of the Flies. Is that? A, yeah, uh, right. <laughs> Lord of the Flies. It's a, it's a, so it's a lot of this kind of thing. And what do they say in the Matrix? We never try to change, generally don't try to change a mind after 25. Right. And, um, and, and we see why, because people get stuck in their, in their ways. Um, they've been around long enough to be so programmed and so uh, committed to their beliefs and habits that it's very hard to change our minds. Yet, media has such incredible influence over changing their minds. If it comes from a certain platform, people will easier, more easily accept it as opposed to maybe the you or the me or whatever. Well, that's science because that's the science of people not having, not, knowledge, not having knowledge of self and not understanding. And I saw this when my daughter was an infant. They play with chakra colors that they know can manipulate your thought process. They play with this. But if the average person doesn't understand themselves, doesn't understand uh, the difference between a sigil and a symbol, that a symbol is just a physical manifestation of, they're going to be led astray, which is why, for example, I kept telling people that Black Lives Matter being painted in yellow down the middle of the street is not a symbol. That is not a symbol. <laughs> you know, what I'm a symbol would be you getting flags. A symbol would be you something that represents right, 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 right and right. a symbol is something that blends into the background. Mm -hmm. What that is is graffiti, and it's written in yellow. So the so even the strength behind that is 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 not is you know what is the, what is, the, what is yellow rep yellow represents fear. Yeah, yellow means slow down. So even the science behind that is nothing. Well, we see possible. that with the stoplights. Exactly, which is so, why the stoplights are as they are. Right. So if I know these sciences about colors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and you don't know, I'm going to have a field day with you. And that's why people go for it because they'll watch television. They don't understand they're watching tele television. It's called programming for a reason. Right. But the average person, right over their head. Because right. it makes them feel good. It appeals to the dopamine level, I guess. you know. Because you say the five home. senses need to be um attacked or they need to yes, be impacted that's why they bombard us that's why i tell people american citizens don't know peace the average american based on this structure has never spent one week where all they had to be concerned about was just being at peace they don't know what it feels like because you're bombarded that's what made me now i'm jumping to political as an as a african-american look at donald trump different because I was like, why are you bombarding me with all of this negativity about this dude? If he's that much of a racist devil, then I don't need you to yell and scream at me and tell me don't look at him. If he's that bad, I can look and go, Donald Trump's the worst. So even all of when it comes to politics, it's like I look at people and I'm going, you're being misled. I know he comes off as an a-hole. I know he may come off where he doesn't have people skills, but jumping into politics really quickly, I, especially with the African-American community who hate Donald Trump blindly, I never can have anyone name me a policy or bill that Donald Trump has been behind or signed that was directly detrimental to me, directly. But I can name you bills he signed that is directly positive for me. The black college, the HBCUs funding them. My baby's about in about four years. She's gonna be ready to go to college. I know that I know that he signed a bill in education where they get rid of the, the lotteries to where if you want your child to go to a better school district, they can't do lotteries to base it on your economic standing or your race or your gen, your creed, whatever. They, it, it's all testing. I know that he signed a bill to, to outlaw the chokehold. I know he signed a bill dealing with prison reform. And so I'm looking at African Americans like. Arthur, he signed a, 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 a bill to, to give more money for funding for sickle cell. And I'm looking at black people like, um, he didn't need your votes. 
but he's doing these things right here. And well, he's he, not for vaccines either. I mean, and he's not for vaccines. And when people say, I just had this conversation with a friend of mine on Facebook who said Donald Trump has been horrible in his dealing with, with COVID. I said, the only way you can say that is if you believe COVID-19 is a hoax. But if, it's, if you believe it's natural, other than put you all on martial law and force you to get vaccinations, what else could he have done? The man is trying to give you all an opportunity to figure it out. So, and I'm not even a Donald Trump, uh, I'm not even a political person in that, that man. Right. The only reason I voted was because a, a high school friend of mine is a New Jersey state senator. And in my hometown, I know the mayors and the, and, 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 uh, the, the, the aldermen and the freeholders, which is what I tell a lot of people when they talk to me about politics. If you don't even know your own freeholder, shut up and go over there. Don't talk to me about mm -hmm. Donald Trump if you can't name people on your city council, if you don't know the school superintendent, if you don't know who's on the school board, if you don't know the people on the zoning committee. Wait, right, committee. the local. Mm -hmm. yeah, don't, don't talk to me about Donald Trump and who I should vote for. But so that's why I would get vote because I'm my main man. I'm, they, you know, they support what I do in my hometown. All right, right whatever. Because it's a game and I understand I'm playing a game. But at the same time, when I'm looking at the current situation, I'm looking at people going, you guys don't get it. Like you're literally running yourself into a brick wall. Mm -hmm. And because you must stay on this narrative of cancel culture, it's what I say. And it's only gonna be one way. And even if you show me that I may be wrong, if there's enough people behind me, I'm gonna stay this way. And when reality, everyone's being manipulated on a spiritual esoteric mind level. Oh yeah. And so the masses of people acknowledge that this is going to go on, but then that's where I think it takes people like ourselves and regular people who know to step up and be like, yo, I know what time is and I'm not going to let you talk me into foolishness. And, yeah. And it's and, subtle too. A lot of this is a lot of the transforming of people's minds. Um, people who don't think that they're being affected. Um, it's also subtle. Okay. So, all right. So, so what, what do you know in terms of, um, we talk about this black secret society um, what, what's your, your take on it? Because it, it has a heavy connection and tie in also with the entertainment industry to my knowledge, but what's your, what's your take on, on it? The biggest problem in America is the Masons, is the Freemason orders. Uh, whether it's the Freemasons on the, the white side of America or the Boule Freemasons on the black side of America. They are all the problems. Every officer that's ever that's been involved in big issues like this George Floyd, he was a Mason. They're all Masons. It's a Masonic. We're living in a Masonic order. So, that's oh, you're the, talking about um, yeah, that's who, where the, who was that's, killed? Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. Like, they were, there was a Masonic thing. So, like, you have the Albert Pike kind of Masons. And I'm sure right. people that could go way deeper. I just, I'm yeah. Know how to tell you to get there, but I'm not sure. going to tell you everything. Right, thing. right, right. You know, so, not not getting into it very yeah, deep yeah, because it's, it's so deep, though. Yeah. It's really it is, but it's really not. Yeah. But also, I know because I did the studies and I realized that the W. E. B. Du Bois talented tenth was like to me, from what I st saw, the head of the beginning of that boule where he believed that ten percent of black people in America can succeed. So he was mm -hmm. totally opposite of. Uh, Marcus Garvey, who was like, yo, let's get up out of here. Where, mm -hmm. So that started, because if you look at it, only 10% of Black America ever really succeeds. Mm -hmm. You look at the entertainment industry, right? It's the same Black people. It's really nobody knew. You look at Black wealth, it's the same people. It's really nobody knew. But then again, it's the same thing for the other Masonic order. So it's really all the same. Like, I think once we all realize that it's all the same BS, there's more clarity. Mm -hmm. just that being black, you want to. I want to hold on to things a little bit more because of your emotion. But the reality is, like, no, it's the same exact thing over on their side of the water. We're all going through it. We're under siege by the Freemasons, mm -hmm. and I know this because that's in my family, it's in my blood. I've had Freemasons come at me my whole life. I know thirty third degree Freemasons that have no reason to know me. Yeah. What's up? Like, what do you call? You're like, I know. You know what I'm saying? My whole yeah. young life. When I was in college, of course, the frats only go after, fraternities only go after people that have a lineage. Mm -hmm. That's why they pick and choose. Right. So, my, so then my, you have to be investigated. Somebody's investigating yes. you before. And, and um, yeah, it's really interesting. I, what I do know is that from kindergarten, from probably even preschool, that 
kids are monitored, kids are, are, are watched in terms of their abilities, in terms of how well they do in school. I know because my kids, I, you know, I remember getting whatever I got from Board of Education regarding one of my, my kids because they did so well in kindergarten um, on these tests that they give to kids every, every year. And then later on, years later, when that child got to maybe like 11 or 12, then there was an invitation to attend um, one of the big universities. Now, at that time, not knowing as much as I do now, I remember I allowed at the time my child to make the decision because they, they weren't nerds. They were skateboarders, and, but at the same time, still very, very bright. And he said to me, he says, if I'm smart today, I'm going to be smart tomorrow. <laughs> so with that said, I didn't. I didn't force him to start taking college courses because I knew it would cut into his, um, his living. He's enjoying right. himself. But, you know, so that's the point I'm making is that everybody is being uh, But here's the watched. thing I think you're missing about yourself. Actually, that's not really true, I'm going to say. From <laughs> you're going to say that they you're watch me. Watched, <laughs> you're being watched because of who you are and your bloodline and your lineage. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I know I was you know being watched, saying? but not until later. Right, but that's what, like, I explained the same situation that I went into when I was at BET. The only reason why I was even involved in the situation and go through what I went through with that president was because I created a show that made me go from a spoken and will worker to now I'm an asset. Mm -hmm. So everybody, same thing in school, you have valedictorians. Well, the C student is not going to know the superintendent. So the, 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 the A student can't say that, well, no anything other than, wow, he knows me, but then nine times out of 10, this person knows who your father was because your father was a great student. Your mother was a great student. They followed. So again, as I've said before, if I took over, I would know who all of Joe Biden's bloodline is. I would follow the Clintons. Trust there's me. There's a map. I mean, they, they create, I mean, there's a tree. They create a... Right. I, I mean, there's a file on everybody. Let's yeah, so, so because it's a psychological test, you go, well, what can this person bring? So unfortunately for me, I brought destruction, mm -hmm. but I did it under the guise of believing that, hey, this is hip hop, I love it. Because the show that I created, Spring Bling, was really one of the first urban shows that showed TNA all the time. But I tell people, I was 25 in Miami with Uncle Luke smoking weed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we came up with this show. <laughs> Yo, we got the girls, da da da. But I did not think at 30, I thought BET wanted to grow. They were like, nah, we making money. We getting $3 million a year from these sponsors off these half-naked girls. It stayed that way for 10 years. A lot of these artists that I would put on on the strength of like, hey, we're going to do this. So they know that they, were, they ended up being kind of detrimental. So they know because it had, because again, even from a small level, the, the president at BET, this is how he knew to get me to do a project, get to really do a good show. Tell me that I can't do it. Mm -hmm. He would come by and say, B. Brad, it's not going to be a good show. It's not a good idea. Yeah. And then walk away and know that the next day he'd be like, yeah, I got my great show. Mm -hmm. So if it's done on this minor level, imagine what it's done on a higher level where they know, as I tell people, I saw it in my hometown. My hometown, the police force wanted more money, right? Mm -hmm. But they couldn't get any more money from the state because you got to have an uh, uh, uptick in violence. So what happened is one day some kid out of the blue that none of the other kids in high school knew who showed up a month, uh, month before, he shoots one kid, nothing really happens. So the next thing you know, mm -hmm. he ends up shooting the grandmother, killing the grandmother, killing the child, and keeping mm -hmm. his girlfriend hostage. And I'm in this school, and the kids are like, who the hell is this kid? Mm -hmm. But then what happened after they arrested the kid? Suddenly, a week later, all these police towers pop up. They got their money. And I said, it's mm -hmm. easy to manipulate a situation if it's a study on psychology. At BET, they know I was known as a bit of a hothead. I'm going to stand in my square. I'm rambunctious. So what they did was they said nothing. They just mm. were putting situations around me, though. People would go, yeah, look at Dave. He's going off. And as I told the people that I spoke to recently from BET, how did you think I was going to react? You have no one to talk to, but you're lit to tell what's happening. But you guys are listening to the executives tell you how out of control I am, never thinking 
Well, the dude said you sexually harassed him, and he did go from being a man to a year later leaving inexplicably. Mm -hmm. So this is so they create a scenario for you to go, he's going to respond a certain way. Right. And once he responds right. this way, we're going to bounce off of what he does. Right. right. They, they manipulate the response. Yeah, totally. Manip yeah. Like when I go back, I look and I say, you know what? There was probably people that would have helped me, but I didn't know. Right. Because I felt like, you know, as a guy. You're and vulnerable. It, you felt like, okay, you're in this by yourself and everybody else is on the other side being okay with it to some degree. Yeah. And it's especially the women that turned on me. That mm -hmm. almost, if I was the kind of individual mm -hmm. that looked at quant quantity over quality of people in your life, mm -hmm. there's a certain group of women that I would not date anymore. Mm -hmm. Because I could not believe that I'm fighting. Because my career didn't get blacklisted. I love doing this. Didn't mm -hmm. get blacklisted until I spoke about women. Mm -hmm. When it was me, I was on, on, and it was the Wendy Williams show was my last major event because mm -hmm. I brought up what the women were going through. And from that moment, I had no more major interviews. Mm -hmm. No one wanted to talk to me. And I'm sitting there like, and even the women in the industry were like, I'm turning my back on you. Because it's a big, you're, you're cracking like, you know, open a huge pit. But I thought the women would have held me down. I thought the women would have said, yeah, somebody's, and yeah, he's a dude. Yeah, and it was but... like, the only per people that I had looked me in my face. One of the um, hosts from one of their popular, their most popular show, she looked at me and said, D Brad, you know, I got nothing but love for you, but I can't fool with you because you hot right now with that stuff you talking. Because everybody's scared it's going to affect them, yeah. their careers. And yeah, so I, I, I do see that. And, yeah. and it is a very touchy subject. It's such a touchy subject because I'm a woman and I have looked at some of this situation and I know, I know, how, let, me, I, let me make sure I phrase this properly. <laughs> um, yeah, because people are so sensitive. Yep. And not, um, so. you know, care. it's like <laughs> some of these people, they did what they did because they did think they were gonna get ahead. But but you can't say that because the Me Too movement I say doesn't it. yeah you do but I'm saying the Me yeah. Too movement doesn't entertain that and I think that we do a disservice to yes. people taking ownership and responsibility some, for for what their role is and it disqualifies the people who have been in real situations. This yes. is the part that I think is ridiculous. It it disqualifies those people who are really, really in, in severe situations as opposed to the people who are trying to get it, you know, trying to get ahead. I know, I've seen it, you know, uh, enough I of it, it from my days uh, around uh, the industry. But I think your perspective, again, because I played around with the, the public speaking and I call myself a word mystic. And I believe that if, a, if you stand in your square, and you verbalize, because I did it in college. We had our say of no is no rate, and everybody's going, no is no, blah, blah, blah. And I stood up and said, hey, I've been with more than one or two girls in my life that had told me no, and then when I stopped, they said, what, you stop? I said, we said no. And right. at first, there was an uproar until finally one girl was like, you know what? I've seen girls do that before. And then suddenly, now we're in combo, because now, because I think with what you're saying, people were scared, because I talk about Bill Cosby, and although I think he's a creep, I had two uh, lady friends that, came to me and told me about this dude way before Hannibal Burr spoke out on him. Right. But I said, but let me put it in context. In his era, it was, it was the drug of choice was Quaaludes. Oh yeah, it was the, the thing. More, like in my era, it was weed and, and um, ecstasy. I never did ecstasy, but I was known as a weed smoker. And I know for a fact, I would go to the club five, six blunts, cause I know I'm gonna get me a young lady to come back with me because you smoking weed and then you see what's going on. I said in his era, it was Quaaludes. So what happened is, unfortunately for Bill Cosby, a lot of those women that he dealt with, they dealt with him because they thought, oh, you're Bill Cosby, I'm right. gonna get on. Not realizing that, no, that's not true. And they literally the next day woke up with a bad taste in their mouth. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, because you put yourself in that situation. But see, now, nobody wants to wrong. say that. I mean, right. nobody but wants to say it's some it's of that. And, it, and I think as a woman, and I've talked to a lot of other women that I know, and we all feel the same way. Um, you know, and because people want to go. But the fact is that even if 
even if somebody showed up, a woman showed up in a man's hotel room at three in the morning wearing um, nothing but a bathrobe, uh, then that still doesn't give the person a right to do anything. 100% correct. 100% correct. Yeah, but, it was, but, but my point is this, though, is as a woman, I'm just not going to be there at three in the morning. I'm well, not even going to have to worry about being in my bathroom because I'm just not going to be, I'm not going to let you in either at three o'clock in the morning. I agree with you to set that point up. That's exactly, because I teach my 12-year-old daughter the same thing. Do not put your safety in some man's hands. Do not believe that it's up to some man to not rape you. So what he should do and what he shouldn't do is two right. different things. He, I mean, yeah, and the practicality again, of it is... Right, and then again, again, I'm not talking regular America. The entertainment industry is totally different than regular America. It is truly Sodom and Gomorrah. So what also women got to understand, if I've had five or six women come up and do all what I wanted them to do, we all drunk and high, and the woman coming up, you drunk too, and you come up in there, I'm really in that high inebriated state, and then on top of it, I'm the man because I got this, that, and the third. I really don't hear you telling me no. But testosterone is raging. It's raging. And you're putting yourself so It's just a bad uh, formula. It's like, it's, 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 it's a, a, what do you call it? Just a bad mixture, that bad combination. But I think it's all over though. I have the same problem with the African-American community, in particular, this um, George Soros One Black Lives Matter group. And I've told people, and I don't care who they are, black, white, yellow, and green, I've told them Black Lives Matter is not a black-centered minded group. People get say, really right. upset about right. that. And it's and, it's true if they look it up. If you look it up and you follow the money trail, you'll see that that's it's not true. That's, here's where I get them though, Sonia. Yeah. Here's where I get them without even doing that. Being Pan-African, I have been in literally every black consciousness, black centered group from the nation. You can be in the nation of Islam, Black Panthers, 5% of the street, 125th Street, Harlem, the conscious community, go to the black church. There's one thing they all have in common that Black Lives Matters refuses to discuss. Think about it, Sonia. If you go to a black consciousness, black awareness group, what's one of the first things they talk about? Knowledge yourself. Treating your brothers and sisters with love. Oh, yeah, that's always... Black like, Lives Matter yeah. will not touch it. If you go in a Black Lives Matter post and say, listen, I hear y'all about what happened with the police from George Floyd, but damn, this weekend, 60 people, black people just got killed by gunfire in Chicago. You will be called a coon, sellout. Don't come in here with that black-on-black crime talk. And I'm going, this isn't a black... I, this is not a group funded um, fundamentally from black ideology. Because if it was... We could talk about how we treat each other. We would, we would be going to Chicago. BLM would be going to Chicago like, hey, brothers, what's up? We, Black Lives Matter would be encouraging our sisters to honor the brothers that showed them respect. Stop paying so much attention to the dogs over there. Black Lives Matter would be telling black males, man, show your sister some respect. But instead, all Black Lives Matter focus on is us chasing a dollar. Yeah, but, um, and then people say there's, <clears throat> there's the actual group that was formed, and then there's the hashtag. You, you know, that there's two different, two distinctions. But when you do go to the website, I have to say, Black Lives Matter website, when you do go there, you will, you do see the trail. You do see what, you know, yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, you, can't, um, you can't have any yeah. other conversation of, it's, 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 it has to be some form of, I hate Donald Trump, F the police, and um, all of a sudden now everybody, and it's funny because everybody's woke now, because this is really what my, what one of my pet peeves is. Um, just seven months ago, all of this so-called black consciousness that everybody's talking now, we were called hoteps. We were made fun of, we were mocked. You didn't want us around your millennial white friends because we embarrassed you. You made fun of us at when we go home at the cookout. So now all of a sudden, everything is black, 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 black. But I'm going, well, where is Dr. Linda Jeffries? Where is the Sonia Barrett being called to speak? Where is the, I'm not even gonna say myself. Where mm -hmm. is, if, if we wanna get on all of this Columbus stuff and everything, well, where is Dr. Ben? Half of these black people wanna pull down these statues, don't even know who Dr. Ivan Van Sertima is. Have never uh, read anything before Columbus. Man, and he was just amazing. <laughs> Van Sertima, he, oh my gosh. They don't know who Dr. Imhotep oh. is. They don't know who Dr. Francis Cress Welsing is. But yeah. you're going to tell these white people that you're going to tear down these statues. Well, for them, technically, because he looked like them, Columbus did discover America. 
and basically you're tearing out their statues off of emotion and conspiracy theory. So it's like the only black people that should be allowed to run around America right now tearing these statues are from the black conscious community and from black scholarship. You know what I'm saying? You should see Dr. Leonard Jeffrey like, we're going to tear this down. Because I've been telling people for years. You understand what I'm saying? Or you should right. see, you know, these hoteps running around. But these average African Americans that just seven months ago was reveling it and telling, it's like, you know. Yeah, yeah. But people are, people are also jumping on the um, bandwagon of trends yes. also. I mean, I, you know, I've talked about that a while back with activism. You know, activism um, is also trendy. Um, you know, people want to, I, I saw it with some of this Black Lives Matter stuff. You know, people just want to, they want to be part of the, the crowd, the march. They want to go down mm -hmm. in history as being part of all, you know, so, so, so we did, we did see that. And you do, you do kind of shake your head because you see, you're observing the truth of what is really going on. Because, it, because I, I feel like everything has an order. And my thing is, if you really want an order from all of this, 65% of black people in America was supposed to turn around and go, on, um, Sonia, um, look, last year you was talking this and I was like, whatever. You know, oh, hey, Dr. Leonard, oh, hey, you know, Dr. Phil Valentine, look, brother, you've been talking this. Oh, wait, let me go make sure Bobby Hemmings still alive. I know we had, you know, hey, this is young brother, young Pharaoh. Hey, young Pharaoh. You know, which you would love. I don't know if you ever heard of him, Young Pharaoh. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've, I've heard of him. I know the yeah. name. Or anybody. Like, mm -hmm. you know, again, I'm going to say you. You've been on, you've been talking this talk, and you don't even do it where it's black, black. You do it where everybody can come in and comprehend. Why? Well, why, but, yeah. yeah why it's are you crazy. not in the same position as Candace Owens as far as the black community is concerned? They should be running out knocking on you. Like, hey, hey, what do we do? They should be coming and saying, what do we do? Not realizing that everything you're doing, I told these young people, I love y'all, but again, your strategies are horrible. You never have an exit plan because you threw your tantrum now. Our generation, we went wild over Rodney King after we gave the court system a chance to do the right thing. Right. I said, so as I asked my 12-year-old daughter, so if the courts don't put that man in jail like y'all think, then what you gonna do? Mm. She was like, and I asked younger people, what you gonna do? You gonna throw another tantrum? Because they already prepared for you now. They yeah. know what you're gonna do. So what are you going to do if they could, they could, on top of the fact that even in Minneapolis, I said, most of y'all didn't study. Don't be surprised if that cop doesn't get a lot of time because if you believe that he was real, but let's just pretend that he was real. He's mm -hmm. not going to get a lot of time because in, Min in Minneapolis, you actually could restrain someone by putting your um, knee on their neck. It's mm -hmm. archaic, but it's not right. against the law. So I'm mm -hmm. looking at people going, y'all are going to be really upset. But then again, how do you judge and dictate how much time you should have got? Because you already threw your riot. You did it already. So it's like you have nowhere to go at this point. No exit plan. You all who are supposed to come, look at all those hoteps and go, what y'all think we should do? Because I can guarantee you the game would have been totally different. They'd have been like, okay, we made a mistake because here come all these conscious black folks coming up. Here come... Now we got to really answer because they're not going for it. They love to debate each other all day. Right. And we know the difference between them and the regular communities and the conscious community, there'll be debates, but behind the scenes is WWE. We all know each other. So we'll set up like, listen, Sonya, I'm going to go against that point you just made, and then you ride off of that, and then, but in the African-American community, the beef is real with each other. So it's, I'm interested to see, so I sit back and I watch. Like, okay, watch where gonna go. it's going to go. I, I want to yeah. see where it's going to go, because for the first time, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's, it's, it's that kind of game right now because everything is sort of up in the air. You're right. This is a time of, of chaos, of necessary chaos on one level because um, there's a natural transition that's happened. Trans transition, transformation. I call it a reset and upgrade um, yeah. that's happening right now. So we're in the field it called of the that. Isn't it yeah. called the equinox? Like every 2,500 years, yeah, there's I a mean, shift in consciousness throughout the whole year. Right, of, right. There's, there's, so, yeah. yeah, there's cycles, you know. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah cycles yeah. that, that, and, and this cycle has initiated um, what, we're, what we're seeing at this time. Plus, it's the shift in technology, which represents um, so much more, so much, a much bigger picture, because that's getting ready to step up even more. So it is an opportunity for yeah, people to figure out which way they want to go. Yeah, the art of, well, not, as I, I had a rap group actually sample me. They actually owe me a check because I said in the lecture, after 9-11, everything changed. It was over. Well, that, that life you saw that you thought you knew, after those mm -hmm. towers fell, 
on a on a material level and especially on an esoteric level. Mm -hmm. The mentality of everything changed, but it happened so slowly that people didn't get it because they want this, as I explained to the children when I lecture on the science of superheroes. Mm -hmm. It's like we are thinking that we gotta be this big rate. It's like, no, the science that they know your strength is your mind. Mm -hmm. The Incredible Hulk is your mind. It's not some dude physically running around, but they understand that most of us don't understand. That technology, that's that, tool, <laughs> that, that mind, I'm technology not even, of the mind and the brain, the yep. heart. Here's the crazy part about me. Like I got into a conversation where I, I don't like, I'm not fond of Black Lives Matter. I don't, I don't like that slogan. Then a person says to me, well, oh, what do you think all lives matter? You want to, I'm like, no, actually, I don't think all lives matter. I'm way closer to, um, if I took over the planet, I'm getting rid of 65% of the population. Let's start this again. So I was like, I'm way closer to a tyrant than someone that would go, oh, I love everybody. No, I don't. But my life matters. Mm -hmm. It was like, that's how I view it. Like, my life matters. But the whole, this move, I'm like, no. If it was up to me, like, so I could sit. Here's the crazy part where I think, like, even having phones tapped and things of that nature, where I know my phones have been tapped, like the leader watching. I throw them off because I talk just like them. The only difference between me and Bill Gates is with them vaccines, Bill, I'm just going to wipe your family out. But I'm with you, bro. I'm <laughs> with you. I told I'm you. I'm always thinking that's who they should give it to first. And they want to yeah. test this stuff. I'm always like, why don't you all test it on your families I, first? I you do. Yeah, I believe, give it I to your you kids then. and stuff. <laughs> I do believe that, that there are too many useless eaters. I do believe there are too many imbeciles. If I took over, their frivolous sex is over. Well, you met her yeah. where at the club? No, sorry, break that up. Literally, I would be like, you met her at the club. If you met at if you met at a decent place where y'all met last night at the club, you're getting locked up for five years for stupidity because you're about to rate you about to bring a towel here that's gonna be dumb like y'all. Like I'm literally that dude where I can sit with the elite, the global elite, and go. So I'm not even mad at them. I just laugh because I say that they're dastardly brilliant. Like yo, you pulled this off. You well, they're, they're they're I mean they're masters at this. That's why in the quote I did yesterday, I talked about the, the bloodlines and you know. It's a it's a system that's been in place for a long time. It's a, it's I don't even know what else to call it, but it's a construct, a yeah. way of operating. It's a well oiled machine. But here's and, why, oh, yeah. Wow. But here's no, go why ahead. Here's why I compliment them. It ain't because it's it's not because it's complicated. It's like yo, at the end of the day, you know how you break this spell? Why they simply going? No, nope, not gonna do that. Right, but people and can't the really, is right. Yeah, and but they the can't do that. It. It's like, yo, the gate is open. They leave the gates open. Right. But I'm like, Dave convinced you these people to stay inside. I'm like, yo, props to that, son. Because I didn't think people was that dumb, dog. I, I was like, and mom, as a child, I knew that by the time I was this age, because I'm 49. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, man, hell no, I was wrong. And I give them props, like, yo, you pulled that off. Like, these right. people are really that mentally dumbed down that you can give them anything, crap on a stick, and if you present it to them right, they will eat it up. Yeah, well, that that's the thing, though. And so when you say, you know, um, yet yeah, all they have to do is go, you know what, no. Well, the problem is that most people can't <laughs> do that because they're, well, the programming is so deep. And again, it requires ownership of self, taking self, responsibility of self. And people have been programmed to have some, the others, the system or someone else be responsible or, or somebody else smarter, your, your minister or your uh, uh, po political leader. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather you do it, Sonya, because I don't trust who? myself. Huh? <laughs> I said, I'd rather you do it, Sonya, because I don't trust myself. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, you... But I think the, the one thing that they, these beings, these entities mastered, was the true manipulation of ego motion. Oh yeah, because it's well, it's, mastered it's about emotions. This, yes, this ride right is about uh, feelings and, and emotions and, and, the, and the, the whole sensory system. It's, it's you know, electrochemical impulses. I mean, and, this and I, is what this is about. And so the way I view it is like, even when you go into the elite and they go, oh, these people are dying and using the energy. Well, I'm like, well, you know, I had someone close to me that was of age pass away, and guess what? When I, when I, the, the, the agreement I made with, with this person was, I will use your energy to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. tell people all day, whatever you think, especially those people that are into critical thinking or conspiracy theory, I tell them, whatever you think that their leader doing, why don't you stop worshiping them so much and you do it? 
Mm-hmm. Here you go. There you go. Get up and meditate. Get up and use it. Do, 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 do the same exact thing. If you know that television is programming, then don't turn the TV off. Like what I did as a, for my daughter growing up is I love basketball. And I would let her see me just get up and randomly turn the TV off. Mm-hmm. Daddy, I thought you were watching the game. Yeah, but I don't want to watch it no more. Right, right. That's, so my daughter never grew up thinking that where I was like, turn the TV off. No. She has to be hooked into that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, if you just let the crave, the crave, that's what right. it is. It's the see, crave. Yo, I don't need it. I'm cool. Yeah. She'll see two, three days with no TV on and maybe two, three days with TV don't go off. Right. But, and, and I, and that's what the science of what I think the elite did that is so, I think it's like, I could sit with them and have a comment. We could sit and, crack and drink a beer like, yo, dog, I don't even drink beer. Like, man, that was crazy. Like they actually fell for that. Yeah, I know. That's that. We do the same thing too. We're just like, but but sometimes you just like shaking your head. You're like, what? And it was like, I, I tell the story of going into the store a couple of weeks ago. And I, since I, you know, since I refuse to wear a mask, I can say, it cause I'm not in KPFK right now. Um, since I refuse to wear a mask, I, I have a scarf because it's, you know, it's Calif- it's LA. They're like, this is the center of the madness. Um, so I, I decide I'm going to go to this particular store because I'm like, I've been passing it. I'm like, okay, so I have my scarf. I won't cover my nose. Um, I'll cover my mouth if I have to go in because unless nobody's watching me. Um, but then I, I, so I go to, to the door, got ready to enter. It was actually a furniture store. And the woman looks at me. She goes, oh, are you by yourself? And I said, Yes. She goes, okay, I'm going to need to take your temperature and I'm going to need to sanitize your hands. I looked at her. I go, you're going to need to do what? <laughs> and she repeated it. I go, bye. I like turned it like, I was like right around and went out of there. Right. And people, there are people that are going, okay, I'm not two. You're not going to take my hands and spray my hands. I've got grown children. Kids elementary school when as a as a substitute teacher with little children wash your hands cough yeah. into your sleeve like this it's like yo they're literally treating you all like babies and you're cool with that and and people are going with it i don't you can't even be mad at the system to to, no, uh, to a great degree it's the only reason why they're able to do it is because people are allowing this and now what they've done is they've turned it so that we are policing each other since they can't that since those five people <laughs> since, since yeah. a little handful of people can't monitor all these people they're getting us to hold people accountable why aren't you wearing your mask people are getting mad at each other i have friends that are telling me that that's what happened they're like what my friend wears a v for vendetta mask <laughs> He won't. That's what he wears on his face. They're like, sir, you can't wear yeah. that. He's like, why? <laughs> I wear the mask. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the mask thing for me, I put it on when I go in the store because I'll reach a level of exp- of wisdom where I don't argue with idiots. Like, whatever, dog. Like, well, I'm at a point in my life where, like, for instance, I'm totally against the. Uh, I was not standing for the Pledge of Allegiance when I was in elementary school. I just said I'm Muslim. And they was like, okay, and this is the 80s. So I told my daughter she don't got to stand for that bull crap either. Right, but right. if I go to a public event, I don't feel like arguing with nobody. Right, right. So no, so I get sometimes you. Sometimes I'll stand and do what I do. And like, I wish when you up the woods or something. But the other time, like, because I'm, I'm too old for that. I can't well, when you go in a store, yeah, when you do go in a store, for me, I cover my mouth with a, with a scarf. I just refuse to cover my nose. I'm just telling you the truth. I just don't cover my nose. I, I agree with you. My daughter says she feels like she's suffocating. I tell her, yeah, I just I'll put the mask nose. on because the wicked fun of it is like, yo, so I'm going to put this mask on. look like I look and walk up in your skull. So let me just put my black mask on my hoodie. I'm going to So Yeah, 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 yeah. Because any other time, you might think I was robbing you. But now it's like, so it's, it's fun. You now it's acceptable. It, right. it, it is crazy, though. It is absolutely crazy um, to it's see people... Yeah people doing that I, I i just it's it's just crazy to me well i, I think that and i and i often say this when talking to youth like i don't talk to adults a lot i talk to the children to the youth yeah it makes sense <laughs> I, I talk to the youth because like i have i was in this really well-to-do school district called Monunga Gila mm-hmm. down in jersey like kids but like got like horses for pets that type of money oh okay and i used to laugh at some of my white students because i would tell them you know, Mr. Bradley's messing up your life. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, because for now, when I leave, and you go around with your white friends, and somebody gets ready to say something about somebody black, you're going to be stuck. 
because y'all love me. And I'm not, you know, and I don't pimp stuff for anybody. I am, I'm the same dude over there that I am right. on the block. And so, cause they, and I always say, them the white kids, they never seen a black dude like me. So I've had like the most, you know, Republican wannabe come and I tell them like, I've messed up your life because I've made you have to think outside the box now. Now you got to think differently. Cause you can say, I met a black dude, damn. Yeah. He was different than what I'm perceiving. So when we give these, so I'm saying that to say that the children are more malleable. Mm -hmm. than the adults are. So the adults, it's like, I don't want to fight with a grown adult who's going right. to tell me that just because the CDC or the World Health Organization, the same groups that say, well, I mean, the vaccine is a 50-50 thing. Mm -hmm. You know, doctors are telling you to your face, these masks don't work. But because the CDC on CNN had told you, right? like that's almost impossible to get to. Um, an adult like that. But I also do see a difference between people. There's social media people and regular people. Mm -hmm. Regular people don't think like social media people do, which tells me Donald Trump will be elected again. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure he will be. He will be elected again. I said again. that. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, well, I think, well, again, like you, I don't get into politics, but when you look at well, who, you know, who do you pick? I mean, you know, technically, I mean, you know, technically there is nobody really there. Um, you see Donald Trump, but there's nobody on the other side at all. Right. And then the people that they'll bring me, like I tell brothers and sisters who don't come at me about Trump, don't bring me your demon to tell me that your demon is better than my demon, dog. They're both yeah. demons, right? Right. The so, lesser of two evils. That, right. If that's what you're telling me. But here's what the problem is. Again, I told you my Pan-African life. I ain't new to Donald Trump. I'm 49. Yeah. I don't recall ever as a young black person going, I don't race his ass, Donald Trump. I recall being like, yo, Donald Trump's in the Bobby Brown Ghostbusters video. I recall going, yo, Bobby, uh, Donald Trump is a WrestleMania with this brother Bobby Lashley beating up Vince McMahon. I don't recall, even when people bring it back to like the 85 Central Park Five, I'm mm -hmm. like, well, we all thought they was guilty. And to be quite honest with you, they didn't rape her, but they admitted to running around the park beating up a lot of people. So mm -hmm. they didn't do that crime but karma put their foot up there behind. Mm -hmm. And if we're gonna hold Donald Trump from 85 guilty for that black people, then why are we still following Al Sharpton when he got his start off of Tawana Brawley? And that was a stone cold lie. We ain't hold, we ain't tell uh, Al Sharpton like, man, she lied. We just said, okay, all right, get out of here. So when I look at, then they say, well, he had a class action shoot suit. That was his father. And they settled out of court, which means if you sell out of court, that means it was kind of, eh. Right. <laughs> You understand? So when right. I look at Trump, there's nothing he's ever said or did that wasn't to me typical white dude language and behavior. Like to me, right. the average white male will always say something inadvertently sexist or that could be perceived as racist because the average white male, from my experience, really only knows life through his lens. Because right. He doesn't deal with it any ism outside of maybe classism, but even right. with classism, you can dress him up and he can look like he's from Wall Street. Where women, no matter where you're from, what you look like, deal with sexism. Brown right. people deal with racism. So anything Donald Trump's ever said, like the um, uh, the comment, grab him by the vagina comment, I'm only saying vagina because it's you. Like, if it was anybody right. else, I would have said what he said. I don't even know why. I <laughs> Jeez, you know I must really think highly of you. I sure <laughs> you know. But I was like, that was locker room talk. And yeah. on that, I know many women that have said similar things about men. And he said it eight mm -hmm. years ago before he even thought about running for office. So why am I holding that? So I look at this guy and I'm going, yeah, he wanted to put up the wall. And it sounded mm -hmm. stupid. But you keep missing one key word, people. Illegal. Mm -hmm. Immigrants. He didn't say immigrants. He said illegal. Everything he's wanted to do is like, I get it. He didn't say it the way that you liked it. You, you, you saw Obama patting you on the butt going, hey, it's going to be all right. And they give you a fist bump. And then he goes off and does something totally different. But I'm like, if you, if you judge Donald Trump by what he's well, done. He's raw. He's raw in what he, yeah. I mean. And, and, you know. I, don't, and I, don't think, yeah. I don't think he's some great guy. But I do know that he, he like, for instance, all the other candidates you can name me, I can go on YouTube right now and go, child sex ring. And then they, all these other people that people will name me. And then we'll go, well, Donald Trump took a picture with Jeffrey Epstein. But he also told everybody, I'll stop hanging with him because he's not a good guy. And what's the first thing Donald Trump did when he got in office as president? Signed an executive order to go after child sex trafficking. Who was the first major name that got popped? Mm. The same guy he said that he didn't think was a good guy. 
So I'm like, if you look back at what he's doing, it's like, yo, he's right about Hillary Clinton. Nice. She's on trial right now. Like Dang. everything he's saying is like, this dude isn't wrong. It's just that, oh, it's uncomfortable because I want to look up to Hillary Clinton. I want to look up to this person over here. So the thing that he's doing, and I don't think he's perfect. Well, I think people were used to a more packaged uh, way of presenting politics and um, this this sort of fake way, which one of the things that I've had a time with is understanding why when a politician decides that he, they need to get the black votes, they go into the black neighborhoods, the churches and stuff, smile, kiss the babies. And I'm always like, how do you, we still fall for that? Where are they? The other like like three hundred and uh, you know at least three hundred uh, days out of the year, but all of a sudden you're kissing babies, and then everybody's about we got to get the black votes, votes, and then I think, do is it that you really think that they're that fickle and that you know vulnerable and that stupid and that pliable and that whatever it is that you can just suddenly do that, and then everybody's like you know what you're. I think I have two reasons. You're all right. <laughs> I, think, I think I have a reason for that. I have a reason. Well, one thing I want to get to was the point you made, right? In my 49 years, I've seen a lot of presidents. I've seen presidents appear cool with black people like what you're saying they would do. But I've never heard a president look into the camera and go, hey, black America, come talk to me. What you got to lose? Mm. And I'm looking around at black people like, now this dude is the president saying this. Y'all don't want to go talk? Don't yeah, but he, he, he's not presidential. Like, again, right, right. let me use the quotes. He's not presidential, which is the package. Right. You know. When I'm looking at people going, and y'all, the man just looked at you for the first time. I've never seen, I'm old enough to have seen Carter, Reagan, Reagan, Bush, Bush, Clinton, Clinton, Bush, like still an election, which I love to this day. I think that was the greatest thing ever what George W. Bush did. Mm. That man stole that election. That was some WWE practice. <laughs> it that kept was some, going. It kept going. He was losing that match. Jeb runs to the, the referee gets knocked down. Jeb runs to the ring, throws him a chair. He took the chair, hit Al Gore over the back, threw the chair out the red ring. <laughs> Jeb grabbed the ref, woke him by the ref, said, one, two, and I was like, the greatest thing ever. And you know, that was beautiful. I love that. That's why to this day, George W. Bush is my favorite president. My favorite person. My, I love that dude. I'm a huge. I would be big with that dude and talk. But I think because he always looked like it's all a game. It's right. Just he, a but he used to think game. about it. He would look at us like he would say something and look at the camera like y'all gonna believe this bull crap. <laughs> like the greatest thing I ever saw him do was him. It was a Haiti, uh, the uh, Haiti joint situation, Haiti relief. It was him, Carter, Clinton, and Obama. They were talking about send us money, funds. Yo, this dude stepped up and said, yeah. Send your money to us. We'll take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> I fell out. And he literally looked at the camera was like, <laughs> and I was like, this is the greatest ever. And then Donald Trump's next. So, but what I think what happens when you were going back to the black vote is that, and I've noticed this in the conscious community. Before Obama was in office, you had elders that was like, this system gotta go. It's the worst. Da -da -da -da. Obama got elected. These same elders like, oh, a black man is in the office. Then it hit me. I said, we haven't been fighting all these years for liberation. We've literally been fighting for attention and a hug. So to <laughs> the average African American, what makes today so special for them is that for the first time in American history, you can stand next to a white person and in totality be in agreement. You're getting hugs. Think about how many times you hear black people say, why they don't like us? Why would they don't? If right, black yeah, people was all about people advancing themselves, we would look at Chinese people, we look at the Latin community, we look at one group of people and judge ourselves by, and that's the European, European, right. the white, and we don't even judge us by the white people over in London, America. Right. I need a hug from American white people, well, I need a white person yeah. to say, I like you and I love you. And well, I mean, it's, you know, obviously it's validation and- There you go, you yeah. said there. I mean, I, you know, there's some, some things I'll, there's some things I, I'll talk about and, you know, and the reason why um, I'll get selective when it comes to certain certain conversations, certain things I think just need to be talked about off the record, off off camera. Um, Candace always because, needs you in her camp. <laughs> because I of listening, <laughs> listening ears, eyes, and uh, misinterpretations, yes. and um, and also strategically 
You, you know what I mean? Strategically. But we don't what? work strategically, though. That's the problem. You what? We don't work strategically. We work off emotion. Right, right, right. And, and, and those who are strategizing all the time, you, you know, it's like you're giving the enemy your position and your, your, you know, your playbook and all of that. So, um, so yeah, I just well, I kind think, of. I think strategies can work because I speak from experience. Like the oh, dude it, I it am. can, but that's yeah. the point. It can work. But when you're giving it all out on social media and the media platforms, right. everything that doesn't work to your that's advantage. Televising, that's televising the revolution. You're 100%. Right, ex exactly. But so this that's... generation believes that. I've seen on Facebook, on Black Facebook, on, um, on the BLM, them young kids like, I told y'all the revolution was going to be televised. And I said, baby, I love your enthusiasm. But nah, the revolution starts within. Yep, Everybody absolutely. Until this revolution within. Right. You change your character. Because right now. The uprising has to begin inside. Yeah, um, the yeah. change. Like I, and I'm saying this for public in public for the first time, I have a tendency right now to back off of black America because mm -hmm. until I can see that black folks in general, matter of fact, society, because I don't even like people. So let me get off the black stuff. <laughs> this society, I back off of, I've been social distancing for 10 years. I've yeah. been stopped going to events with bunches of people. I've been stopped shaking hands and all of that. So when they, <laughs> I've been quarantining. Everybody know me, 7.30, 8 o'clock, I'm in the house anyway. So martial law to me was like, whatever, no, I do this all the time anyway. Right. But it's just that um, as a society, we don't treat each other well. Right. It's like either you agree with me or you're the worst. Right. And, and that's across culture. the board. Black, right, that's what I said. That's what I said. Let me get off yeah, the black thing. This society. It, it's society because everybody's brainwashed. This is the, the thing. I think this is the core takeaway that people need to understand is that everybody has been infected by a, a, a lie and a prescription of reality initiated mm -hmm. by a particular group of people going way back. So it's not just one group. It's like everybody, which is, you know, how right. you get the you're division right. to happen. You're right. And you know why you're right? I'm going to give you a private example, a private, a personal example. And even on the side of being conscious, when I was in the entertainment industry, I cannot tell you how many times someone of substance who happened to be white, like I give you, um, of that happened to be white, offered me a position. Like my man that, um, that directed The Wiz and Dog Day Afternoon. And why is his name escaping me right now? Oh, no, my I know goodness. what you're talking about. I don't remember his name, but right. yeah, the, the Wiz. The movie The Wiz, yes, not who the directed, Who directed the movie The Wiz, who directed okay. Dog Day Afternoon. And right now, I guess I ain't supposed to say his name because he's escaping me. But long story short, I was so caught up in black consciousness that this man is telling me, hey, man, come over to my office. You got something special. But I needed, as a black man, to get on Spike Lee's set. Only to get on the sets, be accepted, but Spike Lee make you work from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. So here I am with someone of substance, but because I was caught up in that matrix of black consciousness, black consciousness, every white person that offered me a grand opportunity, I literally would turn it away. Right, right. To go run it to a black production, that would be like, whatever. So right. you're 100% correct. We get so caught, and it took my ego to back, I had to back off my ego and say, yo, Dave, what are you doing to yourself? This is your life. So you're 100% correct. But it works both ways. So I say that for a lot of us that are conscious because we get arrogant. Mm -hmm. And we just like, nah, dog, we can get affected the same exact way. Because right. you'll end up losing life lessons because you're going, Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is like, yo, in this day and age, where we are is really about the frequency and the vibration. Right. And everybody's not. And I think for me and my walk, that was the trick to understand, like, yo, Dave, Everybody that's for you is not going to look like you. Mm -hmm. And I've gone through, put it to like this, in my physical run-ins with police, the only cop that put his hands on me was a, was a black undercover detective. Mm -hmm. I've had white officers, like I said, apologize. Mm -hmm. um, in the entertainment industry, I've had white dudes put me on. Like, yo, get this guy. The only people that screwed me up was people that looked like me. Mm -hmm. So I was so caught up in what you're talking about, that I couldn't see the forest for the trees. So you're a hundred percent. And I wanted to give that example. I want at least attempt to be humble enough to give that example. Cause I'm like, nah, it don't, even if you think you want to write, you can still get caught up unless you step back and go, yeah, let me. Yeah. Step it, that's why I say it's a, it's, it's a deep game. It's a, it might seem, it might truly be a simple game, 
but the the orchestration of it and the ancient nature of it Bravo. and the you Bravo. know what i mean i love it i have fun in it that's like, what it fun. is so you they've been doing the same thing they've been doing the same thing for a while the they and then the people that it's being done to have been also behaving the same way it's like caught in that loop they're doing the same thing so it's the same repeat you know yeah, repeat over here I, th I think if you go into a study like the supposed history of the planet and, you know, the most popular one is like the Anunnaki, the tale of the Anunnaki. Right, right. So, I mean, if you realize that, oh, so y'all bred humans to be slaves anyway? Oh, man. Well, we ain't never getting out of this cycle. But then if you look at it, I think, from an esoteric level and realize that if we are all, some of us are souls having a human experience, but let's just say, for the, being nice, we're all spirits having a human right. experience. Well, wouldn't the human body be a jail? Well, well, well wouldn't the human uh, body be confining? Yeah, I, and of course that's a whole other conversation because yeah, <laughs> you know, that. yeah, yeah, because then we're going to all kinds of other sciences. But I think everything is about being able to um, to break outside of the box. I, I, right. I won't even use the term "break outside of the box" because it's more than that. It's not just breaking outside of the box. It's like transcending um it's transcending so you know so that's like this yeah this whole other thing because you become you become aware when you become that aware you're transcending it's not escape it's not running away it's expansion yes and that's that's a completely expansion different zone. Look at yeah that. Look exactly that. expansion zone that's you're the just... whole idea it's a completely different perspective to expand as opposed to escape or to run away and from. here's the beauty of it what i love which is why i do struggle with people is because you don't necessarily have to be 100% correct. That's the beauty of expansion is that it's like, oh shoot, I said this, but then I saw that over there. Well, and it's we endless just, truth, endless, endless discovery. Endless possibilities, endless truth, yeah. just like you said. We live in a confined situation where people try to confine Very you. Very narrow. Then when you bust out of the confines of comedy is, they will treat you like you've done something wrong. They would look right. at you like, Sonya, what are you doing taking those chains off? You better put those chains back on. You're like, I don't right. have to put them on. I, I took them off in front of, you know, because like people like us take our chains off in front of the elite. And they're like. Well, Sonya. after a while, they don't, you know, you don't, they don't bother. They don't bother yeah. you. Because they know you, the idiots are stupid enough to right, bother Right, right. Because there's enough people <laughs> who are going to keep them on. So, I mean, the, you know, the few people that take them off, I mean, and, and naturally, a lot of times they don't bother um, when they start bothering people is when they become so big that they're affecting mass amounts of people. When you're not affecting mass amounts of people like that, um, yeah. Well, I think, I think where we are now, there is nothing that they could do about it regardless. Because right, there's, there's, there's that truth as well. Yeah, they've accumulated so many toys and they've dumbed the spirit of the masses down so much that like something even like trying to force the mass on. The problem for them is that you've conditioned your subjects to be always strive for comfort. Right. And unfortunately, your masks are not comfortable. So right. a half of your subjects are like, I'm taking this off, it's not comfortable. Right. So you went so deep that they kind of created their own Frankenstein. Yeah. So that's the beauty of it. Like I, so for me, this is fun. I'm having a, yeah. when this COVID joint went down, I was like, oh, we're song, baby. Let's go. Cause it's fun to me because I'm yeah, like, well, co well, come, yeah. where are you now? Are you in New York? I'm in New Haven. Oh, New Haven. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I'm in New Haven. I moved okay. in the middle of a quarantine. Oh, okay. Like cause LA is like a whole different kettle of fish as they say. Um, yeah. Who knew that LA people drank the Kool-Aid like that? But they did. It's it's a very. Nobody, I'm not surprised. You're not surprised. Yeah. Anybody. It, it's really something else to watch that. You're like, as friends of mine, we're all going, really? I mean, because you would think LA would be, you know, no, they're the ones that are like, they want to be give it to us. <laughs> give us the, you know, give us this, give us the lockdown, you know, you know protect us, save us. There was not, when I would visit LA, there was not more of a spiritually dumb the down place that I had ever been to the point so much so that my daughter's godmother's and working actress and I call her like yo I'm about to come out to LA and make a fortune I'm gonna start talking to esoteric crap and all these idiots are gonna go for it and I'm because I went to the dude's church and I'm sitting in that mega church and I'm listening to him and I'm looking and it's funny I, do you know who I'm talking about the guy in LA the brother I know who you're yeah, talking like, about 
and he's preaching and I'm looking at him and he's looking at me and the whole look he's giving me is like, don't you say a word, bro. This is my gig right here. Yeah. <laughs> he was literally looking at me like, yo, dog, don't you, don't you come in well, here with all that. Everybody's got their game going and, and like, everybody's got their personal game. And I'm you know, first, I that's it. Like, you know who I've been getting into recently? That when I was a child, I was told that he was like, just a waste of time, Reverend Ike. Oh, wow. And he was, he was saying so much stuff then. It was way beyond people's what? comprehension at the time. Just way beyond. I called my father and said, yo, Pop. I, I used to listen told... to him. No, my parents told me they didn't, not to. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. I thought you told me, Reverend I, This was literally three weeks yeah. ago. Like, I just got hit to him three weeks ago. And I'm listening to Reverend Ike. Like, if I was listening to Reverend Ike as a child, like yeah. that dude, but you know, he was. Yeah, I used to listen. I used to listen to Reverend Ike because he was. He fascinated me. Um, not it waiting for not waiting for your pie in the sky. He's yeah. like he was always about getting it right here and now, and he was always upfront about all his many cars and whatever. He was always very upfront about what he was doing and getting you know what he needed because it was his right. It was like yeah. his birthright to do that. Like uh, the so, the deal. Yeah. He, he blew my mind with something simple when he was talking about sealing the deal. Like when you pray to yourself or you, you know, whatever, say thank you to yourself after you ask you. And I'm like, right. he said, because it seals the deal. Yeah. So she, and he gave an example. I said, holy cow. Yeah. I never once pray, made a pray, pray and thank God and then came to thank myself. And even after I got out of the concept of there being a God out there, right. I never, of all the things I would say I want to do, I never said thank you, man. Yeah, it's 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 a formula. It's definitely a formula. Wow. Well, we definitely went a good long way with it was fun. chatting. I it was. Kept going for another three, four we, hours. we we <laughs> definitely explored all a diverse amount of the game. You know, it's different different aspects of the game. Everything we talked about, the game is made up of. So this has been really wonderful, um, and so. Again, for the viewers, how can we see the film? I think it's on YouTube. Yeah, and, YouTube. Um, Sessions of a BET producer. It's about, uh, what, 13 years old? So 2006, mm -hmm. um, it came out. It's still up there. And the book is entitled uh, BET, D. Brad and Me. It's, it is available. A great book. Movie. Thank you. It's available, you, know, you said, on, Am on, on basically. Okay. Amazon.com. You know what's okay. interesting? I think. I had the wrong marketing perspective because I should have made it mainstream. But when I did it, I was like, yo, white people gonna look at me like, yo, he hates me. Well, you, like, nah. you can <laughs> still, you, know, you can so, still do that. No, well, yeah. now I'm, well, actually I have um, a, a hip hop docu, docu series I'm, I'm executive. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm kind of laying in the cut and I'm gonna let you know and I would love for you to, I don't think we're doing yeah. premieres nowadays. But, awesome. Um, we just, we're working to get it picked up. So I have a showrunner. And we're working on that. So because doors open back up for me. Oh, After cool. all this fell apart, yeah. the doors that were closed open back up. And I was like, well, I guess since we've seen Timing it, is everything. And, you yeah. know, we run through cycles. And now yeah, it's and it was my time. In. I spent 10 years with the baby. So it was yeah. Going and it's all, again, it's called BET, D. Brad and Me. It's available on Lulu.com and Amazon.com. Very, very Lulu. good. I'm like finding a bad record deal. All right. <laughs> Oh boy. Well, I want to thank you. I want to thank David Bradley for being my guest. And uh, again, to the viewers, to those of you watching, um, and do visit the expansionzone.com. Chances are you're already on the website, but there are other videos there, other video interviews, and of course, uh, YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, it, it allows more people to see all these wonderful interviews, all these amazing bits of information that you know we do need to, to have and to spread far and wide. Uh, what else? You wanna know more about me, my work? Visit therealsoniabarrett.com. And um, I think that's it, I think that's it. So as always, I like to remind you to live life to its fullest. And you can't do that unless you question everything. So until next time, see you then.